uh, yeah, uh, being busy. Uh, so <laughs> sorry about the delay to this uh, 2396 resuming. Um, where are we? Uh, right. So this is the this is carrying on outcome two. So we started outcome two, and then we put a, a gap. We did a cable calculation video. Hope you had a look at that. So let's just do the back end of outcome two, and then probably I'll do a maximum demand video. Or yeah, I'll probably do a separate maximum demand video, and then we'll pursue with outcome three. So uh, where are we? Um, yeah. So this is the back end of outcome two: understanding the installation's design, construction, and commissioning process. Okay, and it applies to both the practical and the written. You see there's three questions in the practical section or the project section. And then there's going to be two questions in your big written exam. Fine. Okay, so back end of outcome two. The learner's going to need to explain the process for designing distribution circuits. Okay, so distribution circuits naturally is where we're connected to the point of origin to a board to a distribution panel it's not a final circuit it doesn't stop so when you think about the design aspects of that we'll take as you can see here the assessment of general characteristics into account the number of type of live conductors the uh, incident energy levels perspective fault currents the ZEs and things like that also we need to bear in mind that um, <laughs> if we have a distribution circuit that has quite a a a long length or a small run will have the volt drop problem. We did mention that in the cable calculation video. When you do a distribution circuit, you don't want to achieve maximum volt drop. You need to make sure that your volt drop is fairly low so that the circuits, maybe even further distribution circuits going onto it or final circuits have an allowance of volt drop. Volt drop is total from the origin to the final point of utilization. So a distribution circuit should really just barely touch the volt drop allowance. Um, similarly, with the principles of uh, uh, you know earth loop and pins and things like that, we don't want to put in a circuit that's going to basically shaft the person who's going to then have to work on the end of that. Interestingly, though, we do have to um, we have a nice opportunity to play with maximum demand and diversity for distribution circuits because when we think about obviously a final circuit, we can assume the demand and we can calculate a circuit according to that demand. But when we have a number of circuits, we have a number of demands, and we're going to feed a circuit that actually then supplies their distribution point, we can take consideration that the equipment isn't going to be on at the same time, or the use of the system won't be simultaneous. There may be, you know, uh, off the, you know, uh, demand equipment or peak equipment, off peak equipment. It might be that you can't use one item when you're also working the process on the other. Uh, and this is where we can diversify. The, um, the use of the electrical installation and we can take that into account and we're going to cover that in the maximum demand diversity videos but it's really distribution circuits is where we really will actually need to put that into practice because if we don't account for diversity we're going to have excessive con excessive cables which for your project will just look ridiculous um, so yeah with regards to the uh, de designing the process of distribution circuits, we're going to have to consider the uh, general characteristics, we're going to have to consider the volt drop, and also consider maximum demand eye diversity there. We will, uh, yeah, uh, outcome 2 4. The learner will explain the method of determining maximum demand, including diversity. Uh, we're going to do a video on that, which kind of shows you the method. Now, bear in mind, there are, there are a number of methods. Um, there's a common old method of adding things up, dividing them by the number, and all that. That's really just a, a shot in the dark. Uh, there's also people who have written books saying that the service fuse is the maximum demand. No, that's crap. Um, there are proper ways to assess maximum demand. Some software can do that, but the uh, the best way to do it, especially for the two three nine six, is to use the uh, the methods adopted um, in the on-site guide as a guidance. Uh, similarly, if, you, if you've um, purchased the IET's design book, it takes the on-site guides uh, methods and just pushes it further. And we'll probably use those methods in the in the uh, in the video. We'll just use the design books methods. Um, you could be a little bit more uh, practical. For example, I mean, this project is a training environment, and you'll probably find that the drawing will say we need to have a 
110 volt or a 16 amp socket in every single test bay. Now you know that that is only there to actually have a supply to test a temporary installation. So there's no way that those 16 amp circuits are going to add up to 16 amp. They're not going to have any demand at all really. They're going to be energized for testing. So you may have to just, you know, be a little bit smarter with your uh, with your diversity consideration on the project. But we'll we'll, we'll cover that later on. All right. But um, for our explanation of how to um, ex explain it here, we'll cover that in a video very soon. The next one, um, two point five. Explain why specifications may alter during installation work. I mean, this is kind of a common, you know, it's a common sense question. Uh, you know, you can put a plan in, you can have a plan that will work well, but no plan ever works well, no, nothing ever goes to plan. Uh, it could be a, you know, a, a change of design on a client request, it could be a change of design that's been forced due to uh, some, uh, some other issue with, with another part of the building or another builder. There are a number of reasons why, okay? Um, so, don't have to worry too much about that one, but Probably we'll probably put a part of it into the project anyway, uh, just to give it as an example. Two six describe the commissioning and handover procedure of electrical installation work. So um, we 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 understand that you test it, but we have to be a little bit more in depth than that. So we obviously consider what the testing is. It's part of the initial verification process. Requires the production of certification. The the electrical installation certificate, the schedule of inspections, the schedule of test results. You'll also have to provide drawings, manufacturer's equipment, manufacturer's instructions. If you look at guidance notes three, actually right at the introduction, it does mention the uh, operational manual. I think it's literally at the bottom of the first uh, of the introduction page, and it tells you all the stuff. So you know you need to think more about that, about the the handover part. You know, uh, as fitted drawings, yes. Okay, so here's a you know, couple of pictures there. So you know, you understand your schedule of test results must be completed. You understand an as-fitted drawing. I mean, it depends on the scale as to what your drawing looks like. But you don't want your drawing to be on the back of a fag packet, for example. It needs to be a, a, a an understandable drawing that the uh, client can use. And the operational manual. Now, with the operational manual, you will need to obviously uh, check that. Uh, that any um, equipment switch gear or any um, in this case uh, residual current monitors, installation monitors just make sure everything is set as it should be okay and do make sure that if you're putting it into a manual that the the user has instruction on how to maintain or monitor these settings a great example of something that is always overlooked here is something as obvious as the RCD testing you know we put that sticker on the consumer unit it says test quarterly Amount of times I go to someone and I, you know, I'm doing an insp a gap analysis and I say, you know, do you do your RCD tests? And they'll just look at me, little dumb face, not knowing what the heck that means. So you know, you've got to pass instruction to the client to allow them to effectively maintain the electrical system to maintain its life, you know, to a suitable level uh, until the next routine periodic inspection. All right, so you know, be concise and be clear with what you're trying to get across there. To seven, the learner will identify techniques. Keyword there uh, for providing this information relating to electrical installations, design, construction, and verification. So, what? Uh, it's a very awkward kind of outcome question. You know, what methods or techniques are there to give information to the client? So, I mean, we have drawings, we have the manuals, manufacturer's documentation, certification, the specs, any requests of the client's requirements any recommendations to the electrical installation so the different techniques to give information to the client okay uh, it's it's one of those funny questions really or funny scenarios that they bring into these things okay so it's not you know what should you give them it's what techniques are there to provide information to the client um, you can even you know you can even do things like uh, meetings and things like that there are different techniques but make sure you're passing the information over effectively um, that is the back end of outcome two that's obviously combined with the first video of outcome two. I will now put together a maximum demand or diversity video. Um, I could either make it very small, or I could do it. I might 
make it into two parts, one being the demand, one being the application of diversity. It might just be a bit easier. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do that. All right. See you, uh, see you in the next one, guys. We'll push, but that won't be long.